Let's go. What are the most profitable strategies you've come up with uh, so far for the following projects and scenarios? First one, hex in a bear market. What's the most profitable moves you can make at hex in a bear market? Well, I mean, you're gonna in people you're gonna hate me. Maybe other people are gonna hate me. Just buy the damn, just buy it. Like in a bear market, so buy the it. DCA you know, like, basically. DCA. Like, there's no point in timing dips because every time we thought we were gonna see the bottom, there was a nice run up and another plunge and another run up and another plunge. So, yeah. you know, just DCA and don't put all your eggs in one basket over time. But yeah, DCA is is my go to plan for hex in a bear market. Okay. Hex in a bull market. Once we get back in the bull, what is the most profitable strategy you think of for that? Uh, lock your coins up <laughs> so you can't sell them. Save, Give yourself, save time. yourself from yourself. Exactly. Because I mean, you know, this is one of the saving graces with Hex is like you, if you get, let's say uh, a 40 X and you have a thousand dollars in there, you know, or, or maybe it's, maybe it's big, maybe you got 10 grand in there. Or maybe at, after you're up to 10 grand, your invest is up to 10 grand and you go, it doesn't have a 40 X. You got 400 K all of a sudden sitting there. And for you or I or anyone, that might be enough money to change your life temporarily. But it's, if you took those profits, you could cut yourself off of a $40 million purse or a $4 million purse in another year or two. So by locking up your tokens, you know, yeah, it hurts because you're going to look at that money and you could really use it and you might want to end stake but you know you're not going to and you don't and you get that big payoff at the end. Well, guess what? In the meantime, you actually get Hedron and there's Icosa coming up. We could stake that Hedron mm -hmm. so you can make money off of your free money. So realistically, if you're in Hex and you're not staking it, knowing you're going towards a bull market, I really think you're doing it wrong. You know, maybe maybe have yeah. five or 10% liquid, you know, if, if that's your thing or 20 or however much say, in your bag. I was going to say, depending on your scenario and your life exactly. goals and things like that, you may not want to stake 100%. Oh, no, yeah. No, uh, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent's a big commitment, you know. And even with the free hedron that you can get out of it, it's not like you're getting billions of hedron from for even a hundred thousand hex stake. Even if you stake a hundred thousand hex for five 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 five, you're not getting a billion hedron. Even if you advanced all of it and then let it default, it's not like you're able to yeah. do. You're getting in the hundreds of millions, maybe. I think at the maybe I don't mm -hmm. even know what that would be. I, I haven't done the math. It's probably five. I have to do the math. I haven't yeah, okay. but it's probably not a lot, and so. But still, you have at stake, you have exit liquidity. If you need it in Hedron, you have five or 10 or 15% of your bag. And then Icos is coming out soon, which they're probably already announced in the stream uh, going on in the background. The stream um, that you're not watching. The stream that you're not watching. Uh, yes. Exactly. That you'll be able to gain Icosa and you're going to be able to stake your Hedron and make more money off of your free hex stakes. Or not free, but your hex stakes. So staking yeah. in a bull market for hex. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Hedron uh, 10x bonus is over. So yep. maybe you can make some money when the 10x is going on. A 1x, uh, you're not even. No matter how big your hex stake is, you're you're not gonna be a rich man uh, using that, getting a Hedron from. Uh, I, I don't think unless you unless you are a mega well, unless you're a god well, right. maybe god well can do it yep. these days. Exactly. Um, P hex pre bridge most profitable strategies. See, this is the tough one because it really depends on whether you got into the pulse sacrifice or not. If you went in heavy enough on the pulse X or you missed both. Um, and then really what you value when it comes to like long term, um, because, you know, I think you're probably similar to my train of thought here is that PLS and PLSX are both kind of going to want a slingshot after launch. So to a degree at least, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, I guess there's two ways to look at this. One is that your P hex is free tokens and you plan on bringing your Ethereum hex off Ethereum or your funds off Ethereum and migrating them to Pulse Chain. If you're going to do that, you could look at your funds on Ethereum as your actual hex investment and migrate those over and utilize your P hex as just liquidity to move around as you see fit. And mm. if you're looking at it from that vantage point, you could even break that up and, and say you keep um, assuming that there's a somewhat close to parity, uh, between the two hexes that you could maybe bring your Ethereum hex over and hold maybe an extra 10 or 15% of the P hex and just add that to your stack. And then the remaining 85 or 90%, you move around to other pulse or pulse X, uh, and have a bigger stack on those two tokens as well. Um, 
But for me, I think that for copies, I mean, I'm probably just going to sit with them. You know, I, I think that mm -hmm. uh, personally, I don't want to move stuff too much um, because this is so experimental and we have no idea how many people are about to come on board. And we have no idea what that's going to do to price of anything. You know, we could really think that Pulse X is going to be the moonshot. It's got the buy and burn and it's got, it's super deflationary. Yeah. But what if the majority of people coming to Pulse Chain hear about Pulse and Hex and they don't know about Pulse X and all the money mm, goes into Hex that's a good and point. Pulse, right? Because Pulse X is the new kid on the block. Pulse has been talked about for a while. People know about Pulse X, but it's the exchange, right? To really understand it, you kind of have to learn a lot about it. Um, not as sexy, not as uh, easy to palatable for new people. Exactly. Hex is, you know, savings account on steroids, blockchain certificate of deposit. You know, there's a whole bunch of easy, like quick little things you could say to make people kind of get the gist of it within a sentence, you know? And what if the money doesn't go to Pulse X? Well, then all of a sudden you moved all your money to 50 50, one thing that probably went up and one thing that didn't. And if you just left it in Hex, maybe Hex shoots up, and especially because it's on Pulse Chain and it's less tied and less correlated to the rest of the market. There's less holding it down. Maybe it shoots up in a way that we wouldn't have expected. And you really regret it then. So, I mean, for me, I think that just kind of keeping, unless you really, really want to get something that you haven't already ha uh, got a bag of, yeah. unless you really want to get a bag of something, I'd say, keep your funds. If it's me, keep your funds where they lie and maybe allocate a small amount or a portion, whatever you see fit to whatever token you want to get more of. Yeah, and I think the people who sack big for Pulse Chain, um, which not not too many, not too many, not nearly as many. Well, yeah, but who who sacked like really big, who have enough where they can say, hey, uh, all the PX you're going to be trading in, I have enough. I'm willing to part with some Pulse because mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting an extremely good deal. I think it's going to be irrational. It's going to be at least for like an hour. <laughs> Yeah, for an hour oh, yeah. pre-bridge, it's going to be like, whoa, these ratios are insane. Like there's going to be <sighs> some major deals to be had. Now, which mm -hmm. side of that deal you're on, that's the hard part. Exactly. But if you got a lot of pulse chain and you want to part with some and you want some PX, you think PX mm -hmm. has a bright future, you may get some amazing deals in the early days. Yeah. Well, especially because a lot of people are or had been, you know, holding hex for the copy to then use to switch to something else or swap something else. Yeah. Um, at least for a while there, that was a consensus. I think USDC was shifting people's minds. And now because of the whole thing uh, with tornado cash, I think now people are starting, not everyone, obviously, because it's still kind of very niche where the information sits. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's going to slowly turn away too. And that next alternative will come up, but I think you're right. I think it's a great perspective. I think, yeah, people are going to be taking advantage of that cheap P hex if they, if it comes. I think so too. Yeah. Yep. Pulse chain pre bridge launch. The whole pre-bridge strategy you're talking about, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think your best bet is to allocate 30, 70, 60, 40, 50, 50 percentage of your funds that you want to move in the pre-bridge. Mm -hmm. And whatever you think is the safer bet, do the mm -hmm. higher percentage on the safer side and the lower percentage on the more, on the more risky side. Um, mm -hmm. So 30% pre-bridge, 70% post-bridge. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, there's a predictable moment in time when the bridge goes live where you'll be able to roughly do the math on the ratios that were copied over and know roughly what you're paying uh, for any given token. Um, yep. That being said, that's going to go away so fast. And I mean, yeah. by so fast, I'm not talking moments. I'm talking hours, maybe even a day yeah. or two to really shift because there is going to be a fair amount of liquidity in these pools, like especially for pairs that had USDC, even though it doesn't, it's not worth anything, you know, to circle, um, it still ha will have a lot of liquidity in those pools. And so for that pool to actually move, it's going to take some time. So the problem is though, even if there is a, a window of predictability in the beginning, that's going to shift. And as it shifts, everything is shifting and morphing with it. And you have no point of relativity for everything to be connected. So you know where, every how everything's moving. You're just going to have mm -hmm. these random things moving around, you know, disconnected from each other to a degree. And you're not going to know if you made a great investment or a poor investment until everything goes live and Pulse has its first pair and we get price discovery across the Ooh, chain. Glorious, glorious price discovery. Oh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to yes. be really crazy. Like, like buildings can be burning down, just like servers, <laughs> yeah. just hard drives, just dying. It's, it's going to be, the FOMO is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen before. I I, 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 literally I can't, can't see it wait. any other way. 
Oh man, I I can't wait for Twitter to blow up on that day. Like it's gonna be nuts. Okay. Like Twitter is gonna be broken. Their servers are gonna crash. Discord's gonna crash. Like, <laughs> yeah, Discord, Telegram, everything, the pulse chain, Telegram, <laughs> like all the vulnerabilities in Telegram are gonna suddenly appear. And like, yeah, it's gonna be, exactly. It's gonna be mass fud everywhere. It's gonna be. Uh, hey, you know what? Uh, on that note, um, I'm realizing now that that's probably because we're having so much time. And I actually think I'm gonna make a video on something like this soon. Um, and if you want to please do this as well, because this is something we need to talk about as a community, you know, with this big event coming and there being so many people wanting to pile in so many new people seeing opportunity that this is potentially a very dangerous point of time that's going to occur for scammers. Because how much information is out there right now about Pulse Chain? A ton. How long have you been talking about it? For a long time. How much information have these scammers been able to come up and figure out how, how much have they been able to scam people already? If they know there's a day and time where... They're going to be able to take advantage of people. You can bet every dollar you've ever owned and will own that the majority of those people that find out that information are going to target you and everyone else you know, trying to make the money you would have spent on Pulse or Pulse X or in an ecosystem, trying to part you part ways, make you part ways with your money. So definitely gotta I mean, be very been, careful. I'm sure they've been allocating resources and gearing up. And they're, they're probably ready to go right now. They're, they're ready oh, to probably. go for launch just like we are, uh, yep. unfortunately. So that's going to be fighting the scams. It's going to be a battle too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we, we should definitely talk more about that. Yeah, that's um, honestly, I'm glad we had this conversation because that's the first time I've thought about that. And that's a big, big, big deal, actually. Yes, yes. P Pulse X in a bear market. How do you do well with Pulse X in a bear market? Well, you just, honestly, <laughs> again, the simplicity is best here. Hold it. Mm -hmm. It's deflationary. Even when the price isn't going up, everyone else has to make the system burn it to use the system to trade on Pulse Chain. And unless... All the other exchanges get a ton of liquidity that competes with PulseX and they get cheaper fees. Um, the majority of trades will go through PulseX on Pulse Chain. And so by just holding it in a bear market, you're going to see either a, a safe, like a, a safety net against price de depreciation, or you'll actually see price appreciation depending on what's happening. Or there's just, a, I can see a bunch of different reasons why just holding plus, even if you're just staked, if you have this, use a single sided staking pools in a bear market. I mean, you're doing even better than just holding it because now, even if you're holding or earning, I don't know, even if you're holding five, 10, $15 a day, you know, it's not like in hex where you have to wait 15 years or five or six or two years to see that, you know, you get that yeah. whenever you want. So if you are making a hundred dollars a day or if it's $20 or whatever, you know, you can use that at the end after it's accumulated to then, if you want, buy back into Pulse X, you can take it out as your own income. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's helping you. It's a, it's, it's, it's a saving grace uh, just by holding it. And also by staking it, you're actually making some of your money back that you're losing.